So now let's have a look at your IA3, which is going to be a feasibility report. Again, this may be coming up in this next semester, uh, in this next term, or it may be the term after. It all depends on where your school is up to. But regardless, this is still going to be coming your way at some point. So I encourage you to, um, to get an understanding of what you're in for, and that way you can really um, start getting prepared early. So it's 1,500 to 2,000 words, just like all of your business assignments will be in years 11 and 12. So you're looking at repositioning a business in the post-maturity stage. And so in relation to that, you're going to be describing business environments and situations, explaining business concepts, strategies, and processes relating to influences for repositioning in the, um, in the post-maturity stage. You're going to select data and information uh, to analyze the business situation using those analytical tools that we looked at. So that could be the SWOT analysis, the steeple analysis, or Porter's five forces. You're going to then interpret the relationships, patterns, and trends that may emerge from that data that you've selected. And using that, you're going to draw conclusions about the implications of repositioning a business. You're going to evaluate the repositioning strategies to make decisions and pros propose recommendations. And all of this is going to be done through that feasibility report format. Um, and it's going to be that formal kind of report where, um, for example, it may be targeted at the manager of that business um, because they are who would need to know about the feasibility of the strategy that they're considering. So next up, we're going to have a look at an example of an IE3 task. So this is the assignment that I completed when I was in year 12, we did it on Everfresh. So Everfresh is a repositioned version of uh, Cornet Super IGA. And so uh, Cornet Super IGA had that repositioning strategy where they, um, they changed to, to become Everfresh Food Market. And, um, and again, this is the supermarket industry. So we can understand that they are facing lots of competition. So this was a repositioning strategy to try and um, resituate itself in the, in the competitive market. So first of all, you need a title page in your, uh, in your report. This is something that's going to always fall into that communication criterion. Usually the last one you'll see in those criteria sheets you'll have um, where you need to have the formatting um, correct. So a, a title page is part of that. Um, your name, the business's name, um, sometimes the logo, try and make it look professional is best. And then on your next page, you want your table of contents and your table of figures, if applicable as well. So you want to list each section title with the page number. So this is something that you can just automatically generate in um, whatever software you use to write your assignment, whether it be a Word document or a Google Doc or something similar. And list each table with a page number. So with the figures, you're going to be looking at those different analytical tools you may have done, the decision-making matrix. Um, you may have some kind of summary of the key business strategies that, um, that the organization has employed in that repositioning that you're looking at. And so all of those figures that you'll have need to be documented in that table of figures. So first off, we'll have a look at the introduction. So this is where you're looking at those describing and explaining criterion. So you're, you're thinking about what is just the basic background of, of the business? 
and trying to explain that in um, in that concise format. Uh, an introduction is really important with providing that context, but you don't want to spend way too long uh, just describing and explaining because that's not going to leave you room for that higher order thinking with analysis and evaluation. So here we've got uh, even just basic information like how long the business has been operating for, where has it been operating. Um, of course, you need to use that business terminology. So the post-maturity stage is something that you'll definitely be using um, as a term in this assignment. And operating and macro environmental factors. So again, all of those things that you learn about in business, everything that we've covered today, everything that will be in your school textbooks and hopefully your school notes as well. Uh, those are the terms that then should be uh, included in your IA3 and equally in other pieces of assessment as well. So um, we're saying what the factors are, uh, operating and macro, and what they caused. So a slight decline in sales, um, when it was, so this was late 2018, um, and then we've got this idea of introducing repositioning as the strategy that we're looking at. And then just outlining the purpose of the report. The feasibility of two strategies implemented to counteract the business's decline following a name transformation to Everfresh. So we've got that basic introduction with how old is the business, what date is this happening, um, what is causing the decline, uh, what will the report be about. Then you've got more of an ability to go into depth in the next section, which is the current situation. So um, we, we mentioned very briefly the idea of Everfresh in that introduction, but we definitely need to build on that more. So it was rebranded to Everfresh for several reasons. Um, and then you're, you're outlining those, those reasons, eager to trial repositioning strategies on a reasonably stable store, um, you're giving some statistics as well. So you can see how we've got uh, some more information about the sales decline. We mentioned again very briefly and generally in the introduction that sales had declined, but this is where we're providing more information with uh, the hard facts. So marginal 2% sales decline. Um, and $1.1 million in expenditure on um, revitalizing the business. Um, we've, we're looking at lease renewal, um, why the business was selected for, for the repositioning strategy. That is the current situation in this case. And you can see all of those um, little uh, numbers that are floating around next to all of those facts we've got. That was my system of referencing for, um, for my assignment. So I had those numbers there. And then at the end of the assignment in my reference list, I had each of those numbers with the corresponding reference of where I got that information from. Uh, make sure that you follow whatever um, your school requires for the referencing style. Uh, different schools may have different requirements there. So it's important that you are following um, what your school wants. Continuing on with the current situation, and we can see here the criteria as well that the, that the assignment needs to try and meet. So accurate recognition of significant and relevant business facts and characteristics, uh, comprehensive descriptions of the business environment and situation relating to the repositioning. Remember that the repositioning is what you're looking at here. You don't want the life story of the business. Um, that's just not relevant at all to what's currently happening with that repositioning. And again, the business terminology always comes up here. So make sure that you use all of those terms, 
market share, um, saturated market, competitive environment, um, hostile, all of those different words that you will have been exposed to throughout your business studies. Um, so identification of elements of the business concepts, strategies and processes relating to the repositioning, um, all of those are covered in this sort of section where you're outlining those background things. So here we've got um, recognition that it operates in that hostile competitive environment. Again, supermarkets, very saturated industry. And then we're going into more depth there, looking at um, what who the competitors are and how many stores they have. Um, and then going into detail with some um, statistics around the uh, market share of, of the business and, um, and how it relates to other businesses comparatively in terms of that market share. So all of those yellow bits that are highlighted there, they are examples of using that business terminology that we can see crops up in the criteria a lot. The current situation again, so this is, as you can see, quite a long section that you need to go into. Um, it of course is going to vary depending on the information that you have at your disposal and the particular business that you're looking at. So um, here we're going into some more depth with uh, the sort of demographics and um, and those sorts of things with the location. So uh, population of Bundaberg and um, comparison between that and Queensland. Um, and then disposable income, because that is, of course, going to impact um, how much money they have to spend on groceries what kind of supermarkets they're willing to go to based on the sort of price point that they have. Um, unemployment as well, um, in addition to that disposable income. So you can see that we've looked at the business um, specifically with the, the market share, the sales and factors like that. And then we're also broadening out to look at that, um, that business environment with location and other factors that impact the way that the business operates and how well it operates. So in pink, we've got describing that business environment and in yellow, again, those terms with the business terminology that you need. So next up after the current situation, you've got the uh, summary of some key business functions strategies to, to reposition the business. So um, here we've broken it up. We've got all four that are applying. Um, keep in mind that you may not have all four um, that are applicable. It does depend on uh, the particular strategy that you're looking at um, and the business that you're looking at. For marketing, there's usually going to be something that's happened um, with the repositioning. So it can be adopting a new logo. It can be um, social media changes, um, advertising, and all of those elements of marketing. Operations. So in this case, a change of the store layout, um, new racking and floors and things like that. An in-store cafe. So of course, that impacts operations. Um, and again, has flow on effects on things like human resources um, and stocking more fresh and locally grown produce is another operational strategy. Finance. So just in this case, we've got that overarching amount that they've spent on repositioning $1.1 million. And in human resources, we've got multi-skilled um, pre-existing staff. So that idea of retraining that we looked at earlier, we've got people who are already in the business, maybe they work at the checkout and then they need to learn how to um, work in a cafe kind of environment as well. 
um, employing new new people as well. Sometimes you may be retraining existing employees. Sometimes you may need to also bring in new employees entirely who are specialists in some area. Um, hiring employees suited to the businesses focus on fresh as well. Um, and they wanted people who are aggressive in pursuing sales. Is that something that they identified as important? You can see here as well, in this assignment, you will be getting some stimulus to work with. And so you can see how I've got in brackets the, the different sources that I'm getting information from um, in addition to those little, um, little numbers that are indicating where to go to in the reference list to find the, find the citation. Then we've got Porter's five forces, the first of our analytical tools in this case. And we've got the, um, the different categories. So um, first of all, I've got the evaluation. Um, what is the level of power? So moderate to high supply of power, high buy power, very high um, competitive rivalry. So, um, so making that judgment and then um, building on it by actually supporting it with whatever evidence led you to that decision. You don't want to just um, just make a judgment call without having that backup to show um, how you're justifying that, um, that evaluation. And then the last two, we've got threat of substitution and threat of entry. So um, this can be information that is uh, directly from the business. It can be um, research as well. So um, a feasibility report is going to involve research. So in this case, for example, I found um, that Ken Star Blue um, did a, a survey and found that 28% of respondents said that they are loyal to one supermarket while 10% switched to a different supermarket in the last year. So that re relates to that idea of how likely it is that people are going to substitute one business for another. SWOT analysis. So again, you can see the different criteria that are relevant for each of these things at the top there. So significant and relevant relationships, patterns and trends interpretation on of the effects on the business situation and you're drawing some conclusions as well so some strengths aggressive in sales more autonomy in management compared to competitors a smaller business that has less layers less complicated weaknesses um, they don't have a deli um, that caused some customer dissatisfaction so you can see how we're providing more information than just saying exclusion of Delhi. We're giving a little bit more context to explain why we've included that in this case. Why is it a weakness? Opportunities, opening additional stores, uh, selling unique products, threats. You're looking at coronavirus in this case was something that was, that was big that impacted the business during that stage of repositioning. Decision-making matrix. So here we've got the two strategies. One strategy is selling more fresh food from local suppliers. And we've chosen our three different types of evaluation criteria, competitiveness, effectiveness, and stakeholder satisfaction. And then you're giving the evidence in those categories um, related to that strategy. So effectiveness, 6% growth, that's an indicator of effectiveness. Sales increasing by 10%, that is an indicator of something being effective. Effectiveness is a pretty straightforward one. Stakeholder satisfaction, so um, criticism from customers for cutting, cutting the grocery line um, with the number of items available. Um, competitiveness, so um, what is the business doing compared to others in the industry? 
We've got a 50-50 split between fresh produce and non-perishables in Everfresh, whereas other competitors have got that 30-70 arrangement. And then looking at the second strategy, we've got opening earlier with the inclusion of a coffee shop and trolleys that have a coffee cup holder. So the first one was all about local produce, and this one is all about um, appealing to people who want that coffee shop offering as well. So um, competitors um, have different requirements under the different legislation. So that's something I mentioned in that competitiveness section. Effectiveness, you've got media exposure. Um, you've got the amount of time people would spend at Everfresh on average. Um, and then evaluating that. So thinking about not just mentioning what it is, but um, building on it by saying that actually isn't enough time for someone to buy a coffee. And that's a reflection on the, on the strategy suggesting that it's not effective. Evaluation. So uh, after you've done that table um, of your decision-making matrix, you also want to have a discussion section about that to, to further um, talk about the findings as well. And that is done here. And in pink, we've got the using that research and those statistics to support the ideas. Everything that you say you want to try and justify, you're looking really in depth and you're doing that research to support what you're saying. Um, again, more discussion on the decision-making matrix. So here we've got some in conclusions that we're drawing. So for example, that 15 minute average visit time that we saw in the decision-making matrix, we're picking that out and mentioning it here. It suggests that time constraints may be attributable for lack of interest in engaging in the cafe. Mentioning potential solutions. So could implement a full cafe and eatery to gain a more notable strategic advantage over competitiveness, but then also considering the implications of that potential solution. Uh, divergence from the core supermarket business um, may be a problem in that case. And then of course, recommendations. You need to be thinking about what is the best option? What would you advise the business to do? So often it's not going to be a really straightforward decision. So it's always good to acknowledge that conflicting evidence, but then provide um, your reasoning and your evidence for the decision that you've made um, and clearly stating your recommendation. It is advised that the business does this. And continuing on here, we've got more in that recommendations section. You're providing an example and reasoning. Um, and this is something that I found through research. Uh, so it's um, a strategy that I'm suggesting. So um, Everfresh should invest in emerging technologies. And then I'm giving a really specific example with a company that they could uh, invest in there. And lastly, we've got um, more of the same thing, more reasoning and evidence for everything, um, backing up things, um, more acknowledgement of conflicting evidence, more statistics, and then clear recommendation as well. Um, and then you have your concluding part as well. You want to um, wrap things up, uh, make your recommendation really clear, um, and um, always have the reasoning to support that. So some tips and advice to finish off for today. So your recommendations in your um, feasibility report need to come from your analysis and be supported by the research that you've done. So don't just pull things out of thin air. You need to always justify everything that you come up with. Um, even if you're not really sure, uh, if it's a bit of a gray area, as long as you have something to back up your decision, then that is good in this case. 
Um, in your analytical tools, you should have identified things that the business can improve on, things the business is doing right, and opportunities the business can take advantage of. So if you just think of the SWOT analysis, that's something that you really clearly do in that, um, in that analysis tool. And those are those aspects that you can then um, draw from to, to build your recommendation list. With the communicating criterion, part of this is referencing. It's really important that you start to, um, to practice this if you're not already um, feeling confident with it. So this is the system that I used in year 12. I would have a bit of a coding system where I would um, keep track of the references that I used so I could easily um, put them in for my final submission. I would have a code. Um, the title, the author, the date, the URL, the date accessed. Um, you don't even need all of those details. You could just have the code and then the URL. Um, and then when you go to do your referencing, you would need to go back to that URL and find that additional information um, so you can do your referencing properly. Um, using those codes, you can then make up tables um, you can have notes for different ideas. So if you're looking at the financial situation of the business, you could have a heading for that. And then you could insert your notes and the reference where you got those notes from. 